Okay. Heard a lot less. Switch them out. So can I. So can I part of you. So can I black and blue. Oh. I'm a sponge. So can I. You're doing it. 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 You're
to the kitchen. Somebody can do that. Hallelujah. So if you can do that, you need to give God glory. talking about giving birth. Everybody showed up to give birth. You know, everybody come to the delivery room because they want to see what you're about to have, right? right? But before we can give birth, ladies, God has been talking to me about a sisterhood. Yes, it's time for the body, women, to come together. Yes. It's time for women to love each other. Yes. It's time for us to support each other. Yes. I don't care, care if you're black, purple, green, or I don't care if you're short hair, bald head, no hair, lace front, no front. I want to tell you that God is calling for women to come together and for women to support women. And see, once you truly understand who you are, once you understand that God has put something special in you, once you understand who God called you to be, and that everybody has been uniquely made and created. Yes. You have no reason to hate on your sister. Because you will understand when you see your sister, she's just working her gift. When you see your sister, she's just working her gift. She's just walking in her potential, her purpose. You will understand that you got the same opportunity. Right? But what happens is we allow fear to cripple us, to paralyze us. To sit on us the whole, we're our people yeah, to get in our ears yeah. and make us think yeah. you can't do this. We are our spouses, and I ain't throwing no shade. But what I am doing is sitting and talking about facts. Yeah. We allow people to say, "Oh, you don't need to be doing all that." Yeah. This the season you gonna have to obey God. Yeah. Now I'm not saying disrespect nobody, not obey nobody. What I am saying is, who you rather see on Judgment Day? Who you want to see? You want your man to be standing here and you didn't obey God because of him? Because he won't be able to help you. Or do you want to stand before God and hear him say, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. My good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. This is where we're going. God is saying it's time to walk out your purpose. How many of you? are not quite sure if you pray. But you know something is not quite right. You don't know if you're carrying a baby, a basketball, or a watermelon. You just feel something. You're like, my body ain't been right. My temperature ain't right. Then you are in the right conference to discover exactly what you are carrying. Hallelujah. Now I know you came for me to tell you what you're carrying, but I came to activate the God in you yes. to tell you what yes. you're carrying. Yes. I'm the midwife. They call them doulas, doctors. Call me what you like. Just get it right and say I like pink, okay? <laughs> but I'm your midwife. And as your midwife, it's my job to turn you back to the Father. It's my job to convince you to keep your focus yes. on the things that are heavenly, yes. on his son, Jesus Christ. Yes. It's my job to help you walk in the realm of the spirit. Yes. And then if you get stuck, then I jump in. Somebody say, then she jumps in. Yes. But today I come to tell you that God is calling you to walk in your purpose. Before a woman knows she's pregnant, she usually has some type of sign or symptom. Before a woman realized that she's even in her first trimester, sometimes, you heard me say sometimes, because yeah. some women have went four months, five months, didn't have no type of symptom. I was one of them on my second pregnancy, amen? amen. Didn't know I was carrying nothing until the doctor told me I was five months pregnant. Jesus. Amen. Gotta do that sometimes because what he's doing is preparing a way. We're gonna get into that. Hallelujah. Yeah. Sometimes a woman will have a symptom, she'll start sleeping too much. She'll start saying, I don't know why I'm so tired. You know, I work today, but I'm extremely tired. She'll wake up and say, you know, today I felt a little wheezy this morning. Some people call it morning sickness. Her appetite begins to increase for strange things, like pickles and watermelon. <laughs> right? She might even miss a cycle. 
But these are all signs in the natural. Somebody say in the natural. In the natural. That lets a woman or a lady know that something is going on in your body. Oh my gosh. Everybody that has given birth or carried a child, how many of you have had one of these symptoms that I spoke about in the natural? At least just one, if not all. Everybody has had something, and it's God's way to let you know something has just invaded your body. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's talk about some symptoms spiritually. Right. Now I just gave you some symptoms if you're pregnant naturally. What about if you pass childbearing years? Okay. What about if you've done having kids? Mm -hmm. What about if you say, well, Pastor, that's good, but I'm 50, 60. I ain't trying to have no bite, baby. I want you to know that you're still pregnant with purpose because you're pregnant spiritually. Now, when I say some of these symptoms that the Holy Ghost gave me, I just want you to say, ouch, ooh, yeah, that's me, amen, something. Have you been feeling like the last six months you've been fighting off hell? Do you feel like you've been fighting against health challenges. I heard a lot of ouches. Have you been feeling as if the devil has had a hit on your money? Somebody said holla. I'm giving you symptoms showing you that you're pregnant spiritually. So if you've been sitting here talking about, no, I don't think I'm carrying nothing, ain't nothing going on with me, you know, I'm just, just fine. If I called out these symptoms, these are pregnant spiritual symptoms. What about, you had a symptom like, all of a sudden, people acting crazy on the job. <laughs> Sally used to speak to you, now you walk in and she just turned her head. You like, well, what did I do? I just gave you coffee. Yeah. <laughs> what about, not only has Sally and the job been a little crazy, what about some of the family members been acting a little oh. weird? Oh. You're like, I don't know, I don't know, I ain't did nothing. What about sometimes nobody at home understand you, even sometimes your spouse? Wow. And sometimes you can feel like, I'm on an island all by myself. Hello. Somebody said, I just went in labor. <laughs> <laughs> Telling you, you pregnant spiritually. Come on. This is the one the Lord gave me. I said, hey, this is funny. What about when your kids think they bad, big, and strong enough to try you? <laughs> that part. <laughs> that part. Yeah. Right? They ain't crazy enough to throw the deuce up, but they kind of got this mouth. You be like, girl, I will take and remove them teeth. You have to go see a dentist for dentures. I'm talking about being pregnant in the spirit. These are symptoms that you will go through or that might invade you, invade your space, invade your life. And you are wondering, God, what is going on? Today, ladies, we need to deal with a little bit of this and a little bit of that so that we can have a healthy pregnancy and deliver a healthy baby. But we need to understand something, which is, I need to ask this question, and I don't want nobody to take offense, but I got to ask it because the Lord told me, he gave me this. <laughs> Who impregnated you? want you to ponder. The room got real quiet. Yeah, yeah. Then it made a lot of noise. Yeah. Who are you pregnant by? Yeah. That's good. That's good. Because depending on who seed you are carrying yeah. is going to determine huh, what kind of baby you about to deliver. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Amen. Some of you might be pregnant spiritually, naturally, or both, 
or you just pregnant one way or another, you do have a desire to start a business, to grow a business. Yes, ma'am. What kind of business to start to have a better marriage for your children to surrender unto the Lordship of Jesus Christ, to be debt free? Talking about these are the desires, these are some of the things you're carrying. Right. Increasing your finance, increasing your prayer life, increasing your walk with God, your sensitivity with God, healing in your mind, body, and soul. Healing in the bloodline, generations. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You might sit here today and say, you know, I'm pretty good, but I come to tell you, God said, there's better for you. There's better for you. There's better for you. All of us need a savior. And all of us need to go to the next level. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, grab your partner and look at him and say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I want to show you something that God showed me because we're talking about being pregnant with purpose, but we can't stay pregnant forever. We got to deliver a baby. Some of us are carrying babies that might need to be spiritually aborted. Some of us are carrying babies that might not need to come forth because it depends on who got you pregnant. Are you pregnant by the devil or are you pregnant by God? Because if you carry a little demon, a little minion, we need to kill that baby in the womb. You say, well, how would I know if I'm carrying a little demon or minion? Are you hateful? Are you unforgiving? Do you come against your sister? Do you hate to see your sister shining and black? Then God said, let the land sprout with vegetation, every sort of seed bearing plant and trees that grow seed bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. They gonna produce what? The plants and trees from which they came. So if it's an evil tree, it's about to produce what? Evil. 
some evil fruit. Yeah. Come on and read. And that is what happened. Mm. The land produced ve vegetation, mm. all sorts of seed bearing plants and trees with seed bearing fruit. Their seeds produced plants and trees of the same kind, and God saw that it was good. Somebody say amen. amen. This is a law of God that is stated at least 10 times that everything God has cr created will produce after its own kind. Uh -huh. If you a cat, you gonna have cats. <laughs> if you a monkey, you gonna have some monkeys, yes. right? If you are human, you should have some humans. Somebody say amen. amen. It will increase and multiply after its own kind. If you plant rice, you go get rice. If you plant an apple tree, you about to bear some apple fruit. Yeah. So ladies, we have to be very careful what seed we allow to be planted in us. Yes. Tell somebody, watch the seed you receive. Watch the seed you receive. Come on, find somebody else and tell them, watch the seed, watch the seed. Watch the seed. that you receive. That you receive. Come on, give God glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because some pregnancies should have been aborted a long time ago. Some of y'all need y'all labor induced. So that the baby can come forth. Because some of you have been carrying the wrong seed. Well, today we're going to take a moment and we're going to denounce some of these wrong seeds. So that God can infiltrate our spirit with the right seed. Can somebody say amen? Amen. So I want you to do an exercise with me in this part of the service. Right. Just stand to your feet. Amen. Some of us got things in our heart. Do you know this is where we per birth at? Yes. Spiritually? Yes. It's what's in the heart. We need these hearts clear and pure before the mighty hand of God. How many of y'all been looking and asking God, when will my breakthrough come? Let me tell you something. When there's guile in the heart, the breakthrough is stopped because there's a blockage. If you go to a cardiac specialist and he begins to tell you that the arteries are plugged or clogged up, that means you can't perform at your highest capacity because there's a blockage. Some of you in this room today, you have a spiritual blockage. But after we get through, denouncing what God has called us to denounce, we're going to be set free. The doors will be open in the mighty name of Jesus. So repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, your son or daughter, I repent for every negative conversation, every negative word, towards my sister hating and disliking my sister not wanting to see people in my circle grow or escalate to the next level I understand that this spirit did not come from you for you are a God of love I want to be a daughter of love. So, Father, even those things I didn't call out, that I don't even remember, I repent. I'm sorry. Now, I ask you, in the name of Jesus, Ghost. I 
I'm unstoppable now. You can't touch this because I'm covered by the blood. And because of the blood, I'm always winning. Now give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. name. Let me tell you something. This is like going to the doctor and getting a negative report. Going back and he tell you, you know what? Everything I thought I saw is gone. No more hindrance. Tell your sister it's on now. Tell your sister it's on now. Come on, tell somebody else it's on now. Come on, tell them it's on now. It's on now. Because that means when I pray, I ain't stopped. I ain't blocked. That means my prayers is now reaching heaven. That means angels are able to go to work, baby. They about to go to work, baby. Now I want you to take the next 20 seconds and send your angels on assignment. Come on, speak to them. Release your angels. Release your angels. Release your angels. Send your angels. Send them. Send them to get your son. Send them to get your daughter. Send them to get your help. Send them to get your money. Send them, send them. Send them for your promotion. Come on, send your angels. You got ministering angels. When Herod was king of Judea, there was a Jewish priest named Zechariah. He was a member of the priestly order of Abijah, and his wife Elizabeth was also from the priestly line of Aaron. Mm -hmm. Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all of the Lord's commandments and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive, and they were both very old. One day, Zechariah was serving God in the temple, for his order was on duty that week. As was the custom of the priests, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. While Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. My God. Standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Hallelujah. Your, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. Now, y'all hear that? Before his birth, he going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's to empower him to do the will of God. Come on, read. And he will turn many Israelites to the Lord, their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure this will happen? This sounds like some of us. God come and tell him, I'll make you debt free by the end of this year, and you want to try to figure him out. Well, God, how is this going to happen? It ain't your business. Your assignment is to believe it. Because when you doubt and want to question God, he had to shut your mouth. All right. Come on and read. I'm an old man now, and my wife is also very long in years. Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I'm Gabriel. Do you know who I am? 
Do you know who presence I come in and out of? Do you know I stand in the very presence and the face of God? Do you know God spoke to me and sent me to come give you some understanding, some knowledge, to tell you that he heard your prayer? And you want to ask me or question what I'm telling you God said? And God is saying to you today, do you know who I am? Do you recognize the God you serve? Woman, do you know how powerful you are? Do you know how brilliant you are? Do you know how valuable you are? Do you understand how beautifully, fearfully, and wonderfully you've been made and created? Woman, do you know? Come on and read. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. Somebody say, good news coming. Good news. Come on, tell somebody, good news, is coming. good news is coming. Come on, read. But now, since you didn't believe what I said. He said, since you didn't believe what I said. How many of y'all in here not believing what I'm up here telling you? I'm telling you, you pregnant with purpose. You pregnant with purpose. Come on and read. But now, since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. At the proper time. Some of y'all been pregnant and questioning God. It just wasn't time. But you can tell somebody, it's time now. <laughs> oh, it's time now. You done cried your last tear, right? You done fell out over that last bill, right? You done cried over that last man. It's time now. Right? It's time for the shift. We must make sure we don't allow the devil to plant seeds of jealousy, contention, murder, gossip. This is one the Lord wanted me to kind of expound on. Covetness. It's okay to like something. That somebody else has or God has blessed them with. It's okay to say that's nice or to admire something. But it's not okay to want to move them to take it. It's not okay to want exactly what they have because your heart is evil. It's not okay to want her business to dry up so yours can be blessed. It's not okay to want her marriage to fail so yours can go up. It's not okay. It's not okay to want her ministry not to grow because yours is not growing. That's not okay. Because when you operate like that, you just shift kingdoms. There's a thin line. There's a thin line. You got to make sure you operating in the right kingdom. Anytime you begin to dislike, discredit, want to see your sister hurting or not doing good, that is not the spirit of the true and the living God. Come on, give him praise. That's not his spirit. God wants to see you bless, you bless, you bless, you, you, you in the bag. He wants you bless, he wants you bless, he wants you. It's so much wealth in the kingdom, it's enough for everybody. Come on, say everybody. Come on, let's jump to Luke 1 and 26, verses 26 to 37. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Uh -huh. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the son of the Most High. My God. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. All right. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. 
for the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, sorry. Uh -uh, Go ahead, I want you to read 38. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And the angel left her. That's what your response need to be. Let everything God you said about me be true. Hallelujah. I want to point out two factors with Elizabeth and Mary. I want to tell you that these was two ladies with two different situations. Both of them needed a baby. Both of them needed to carry a pregnancy. One had went beyond childbirthing years, which was the cousin, right? And God gave her a miracle. The other one was a virgin that didn't have a man, hadn't been with a man. And she also needed to bring our Messiah, our Lord, our Savior forth, right? Both of them needed miracles, but what I want to point out to you is that both of them received what God said. It was Elizabeth's husband that doubted. And if you read the whole chapter and the whole story, I want you to see that once Elizabeth and Mary came together, when the baby leaped in Elizabeth's womb, Elizabeth received the Holy Ghost. She began to prophesy and talk about the baby and talk about his, his name would be called John. What I want to point out to you is that she was nowhere around when the angel told her, told him, Zechariah, to name the son John. How would Elizabeth know? And she at home cooking. I'm trying to show you something. Is that every purpose or every pregnancy that has purpose on it from God, God will send the Holy Ghost to enable you to carry out the assignment. So although she wasn't there, she didn't hear the conversation. When she received the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost gave her word of knowledge, gave her wisdom. That she was able to tap in, somebody say tap in, to the realm of the spirit and understand the mind of God concerning this baby. Mary, this woman was a young woman, frightened and afraid. But although she was frightened, although she was afraid, Although she didn't understand what was happening, the woman of God said, let it be unto me as you have spoken. Some of you are sitting in here today and God had told you to start stuff, do stuff 10, 15 years ago. You started and you stopped. You started and you stopped. You started and you stopped. God is saying now he wants you to do it and do it scared. I'm going to say it again. God said he wants you to do it. He know you're scared. He know you don't know what the outcome is going to be. Neither did Mary. But he's want me to challenge you to do it and do it scared. Because even in doing it scared, you still operating in faith. Because it takes faith to move you. Hallelujah. And God is saying if you do it and do it scared, he'll meet you right where you are. Come on and give him praise. My job today as your doctor, as your midwife, is to turn your heart, your focus, your love, your potential more to Christ. Because you desire the best things in life, because you desire for your children, children to be blessed, somebody is going to have to make a decision in the bloodline to carry the seed of righteousness so that you can birth your purpose. Come on and give God glory.